Welcome to the Dead Scrolls channel. Today we delve into the apocalyptic Hebrew text, the Book of Enoch. Attributed to the patriarch Enoch, the great-grandfather of Noah, this text presents events that align with biblical narratives, such as the Flood, but also contains many unique elements not found in the Bible. A prominent theme in the Book of Enoch is the story of the Watchers, the Sons of God. These angels defied God's will and mated with human women. As fallen angels, the Watchers are central to the catastrophic events on Earth that ultimately led to the Flood. Their union with human women produced monstrous offspring, giants with insatiable appetites and violent tendencies known as Nephilim. In this discussion, we will explore the fate of the Nephilim as described in the Book of Enoch, the fragmented Jewish text, the Book of Giants, and the Bible, which intriguingly suggests that giants persisted on Earth after Noah's time. Subscribe to our channel for more videos like this and don't forget to like, comment and share with others who might enjoy this content. With that said, let's dive into today's video. The Genesis of the Nephilim According to Enochian tradition, the Nephilim were born to the Watchers and their human mothers who were seduced or possibly violated by the fallen angels. The Book of Enoch does not specify whether these Nephilim were born as giant infants or emerged fully grown, but it is clear that they were monstrous, voracious and malevolent beings. They consumed all vegetation, animals and even turned to cannibalism, devouring humans and each other. The chaos they caused reached God, who was displeased by the betrayal of his angelic watchers and the havoc their offspring wrought upon the earth. To restore order, God dispatched his archangels to deal with the Watchers and their progeny. Archangel Michael confronted Semjaza, the leader of the Watchers, who had failed to prevent their rebellion. Archangel Raphael was tasked with apprehending Azazel, another Watcher who had divulged heavenly secrets to humans, teaching them to wage war. Archangel Uriel warned Noah of the impending flood, instructing him to prepare for the survival of his family as all other life on Earth would be eradicated. Meanwhile, Archangel Gabriel was sent to reduce the Nephilim population, with God instructing, Proceed against the bastards and the reprobates, and against the children of fornication, and destroy the children of fornication and the children of the Watchers from amongst men, and cause them to go forth. Send them one against the other, that they may destroy each other in battle. For length of days shall they not have and no request that they make of thee shall be granted unto their fathers on their behalf. For they hope to live an eternal life, and that each one of them will live five hundred years." From these interactions, it is evident that while the Nephilim wreaked havoc on earth, their days were numbered. Archangel Gabriel carried out a campaign to eliminate many of the Nephilim. Those who survived Gabriel's assault perished in the flood that God sent to destroy all life on earth, sparing only Noah and his family. Though the giants drowned, their spirits endured, becoming evil spirits that continued to haunt the earth. God explained to Enoch, And the spirits of the giants will afflict, oppress, destroy, attack, do battle, and work destruction on the earth, and cause trouble. They will take no food, but nevertheless hunger and thirst, and cause offenses. And these spirits shall rise up against the children of men and against the women, because they have proceeded from them. Physically, the giants were annihilated, but their spiritual presence persisted, allowing them to continue their malevolent activities. Thus, the Nephilim survived the flood in a spiritual form, perpetuating their destructive behavior as a form of divine punishment for humanity's involvement in their creation and the ensuing chaos. Mankind, having accepted the Watcher's forbidden knowledge and the women having been seduced or violated by them, bore partial responsibility for the Nephilim's existence, resulting in their ongoing spiritual torment. The arrival of the Watchers, the Book of Enoch, an ancient Jewish text attributed to Enoch, the great-grandfather of Noah, begins with the dramatic arrival of the Watchers. These Watchers are a group of angels who descend from heaven to earth, defying the command of God. Their primary transgression involves mating with human women, an act of rebellion that significantly alters the course of human history. 
This union between the divine and human produces the Nephilim, a race of giants and mighty beings whose presence leads to widespread chaos and corruption on Earth. The actions of the Watchers and the birth of the Nephilim serve as a critical narrative foundation, setting the stage for the ensuing judgment and flood. In the initial chapters, the Book of Enoch delves into the names and roles of these Watchers, elaborating on their intentions and the consequences of their actions. Led by the Chief Watcher, Semjaza, these angels not only engage in forbidden relationships with human women, but also impart forbidden knowledge and skills to humanity, including sorcery, astrology, and the use of weapons. This dissemination of divine secrets contributes to humanity's moral and spiritual decline, drawing the ire of God and leading to severe repercussions. God deeply displeased with the Watcher's betrayal and the Nephilim's destructive behavior, decided to intervene directly to restore order. To accomplish this, he summoned four of the mightiest archangels, Michael, Raphael, Uriel, and Gabriel, each bestowed with a specific task to curb the influence of the Watchers and their offspring. Archangel Michael. As the leader of the heavenly hosts and the warrior angel, Michael was tasked with leading the charge against the rebellious Watchers. He was to bind the chief of the Watchers, Semjaza, and his cohorts. Michael's mission was to ensure that these fallen angels could no longer roam freely, binding them in the depths of the earth until the Day of Judgment. His role symbolized the power of divine justice and the ultimate triumph of good over evil. Archangel Raphael Known for his healing powers, Raphael was sent to deal with the aftermath of the Nephilim's rampage. His task was to cleanse the earth of the corruption spread by the Nephilim. Raphael was instructed to bind Azazel, another prominent leader among the Watchers, and cast him into a desert place, covering him with jagged rocks to prevent his escape. This act was meant to signify the healing and purification of the earth from the sins and impurities introduced by the fallen angels. Archangel Uriel. Uriel, the angel of wisdom and enlightenment, was given the task of warning Noah of the impending flood. Uriel's role was crucial in ensuring that Noah, a righteous man, would build an ark to preserve humanity and animal life. By delivering this divine message, Uriel facilitated the continuity of creation amidst the chaos and destruction wrought by the Nephilim. His intervention highlighted the theme of divine foresight and mercy. Archangel Gabriel As the messenger of God, Gabriel's task was to announce the coming judgment and the impending flood to the Watchers. Gabriel was to warn them of their fate and the consequences of their rebellion. This mission underscored the inevitability of divine retribution and the importance of repentance. Gabriel's presence served as a final reminder of God's authority and the moral order of the universe. Together, these archangels carried out a multifaceted divine intervention that addressed both the physical and spiritual corruption caused by the Watchers and the Nephilim. Their actions ensured the preservation of creation and the re-establishment of divine order, demonstrating the comprehensive and unwavering nature of divine justice and mercy. The Flood and Aftermath God's message to Noah is outlined in Genesis 6-9. God sees the wickedness of humanity and decides to send a great flood to cleanse the earth. He chooses Noah, a righteous man, to preserve human and animal life. God instructs Noah to build an ark, specifying its dimensions and materials, and promises to establish a covenant with him. Noah is to take his family and pairs of every living creature into the ark. The ark's design is described in Genesis 6, 14-16. God instructs Noah to build the ark using gopher wood and to cover it inside and out with pitch. The ark's dimensions are given as 300 cubits long, 50 cubits wide, and 30 cubits high, approximately 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, and 45 feet high. It has a roof, a door on the side, and three decks. 
The design reflects a large, stable structure capable of withstanding the floodwaters. The biblical account does not provide detailed descriptions of the people's reactions to Noah building the ark. However, it is often inferred that Noah's contemporaries were indifferent or scornful, given their continued wickedness and disbelief in the impending judgment. Noah is described in the New Testament as a preacher of righteousness, 2 Peter 2.5, suggesting he warned others, but they did not heed his warnings. The rain began after Noah and his family entered the ark, as described in Genesis 7.11-12. It rained for 40 days and 40 nights, flooding the earth and covering even the highest mountains. The waters rose and prevailed on the earth for 150 days before beginning to recede. Genesis 7.24 the total duration from the beginning of the flood to the earth drying out was approximately one year, Genesis 8, 13, 14. Only Noah, his wife, his three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and their wives survived the flood, Genesis 7, 13. In total, eight people were saved. They, along with pairs of every animal kind, were preserved on the ark. The flood is described as a cataclysmic event that destroyed all life on the surface of the earth. Waters from the fountains of the great deep and the windows of heaven combined to cover the entire earth, erasing all living things outside the ark. Genesis 7, 21, 23. After the floodwaters receded, Noah's ark came to rest on the mountains of Ararat. Genesis 8, 4. Noah sent out a raven and then a dove to determine if the waters had abated. The dove returned with an olive leaf, signaling the earth's renewal, Genesis 8:11. After exiting the ark, Noah built an altar and made a sacrifice to God, who then established a covenant with Noah, symbolized by a rainbow, promising never to destroy the earth by flood again, Genesis 8:20 20 to 22, 9 nor 11 to 17. The Nephilim, described in Genesis 6, 1-4, were a race of giants born from the union of the sons of God and the daughters of men. The flood aimed to cleanse the earth of their corruption. According to some interpretations, while the physical Nephilim perished, their spirits survived as evil entities, continuing to influence humanity negatively. Thanks for watching all the way through. I'd love to hear your thoughts on what you'd like to see next, so please leave your comments and suggestions below. If you haven't subscribed to Dead Scrolls yet, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on all notifications. Don't forget to like and share. See you in the next video. God bless and peace to you all.